Okay, so let's talk about what a budget GPU is these days. Well, you can say that there is a budget for everyone from the high end all the way to the low end. What I wanted to talk about in this video is how much you have to pay for what in today's market is considered an entry level graphics card that doesn't completely suck. And I wanted to approach this a little bit differently. So I'm going to be addressing these so-called budget GPUs as a drop-in solution for an older five-year-old system, which I'm sure a lot of you might still have, and in a best case scenario with a 7800X3D. Anyways, the popular belief right now is that prices in the entry-level market are going up and up and up. And that's not entirely wrong when you look at the mid-range GPUs and adjust for inflation. Prices were pretty stable until we hit the 2019 to 2020 timeframe. At that point, both AMD and Nvidia jacked up prices to an insane degree. I mean, imagine the RTX 2060 cost north of 400 bucks in today's money. For the next gen, Nvidia pumped the brakes and the 60 series cards went on a downwards trajectory with AMD pretty much following in lockstep. But lower end cards, yikes. After 2018, their prices trended higher and higher, though AMD these did plateau mostly due to how terrible the 6500 XT was. And yet that only gives you a very narrow snapshot of the launch prices of these cards. What you should actually care about is how much you're going to be paying for these right now. Let's pop a single GPU into this chart so I can explain this. What we're showing is the average high and average low price as of November the 17th, as well as the cost spread in between. So if you're thinking about what the starting at price currently is, that average low is likely what you're gonna be looking at. First of all, there's a ton of overlap in the RTX 3000 series, mostly due to the huge price delta between cards and completely ridiculous over the top custom ones. But overlay the RTX 4060's price, well, it can cost just as much as the 3060 Ti or a whole lot less. The 3050 is the only Nvidia card right now to make it below the $225 mark, proving that Nvidia cards generally hold onto their original prices very well. Meanwhile, AMD's previous generations have been deeply discounted, so the RX 6700 XT competes directly with the 4060, while the 6600 cards either match or beat the 3050's price. The newer RX 7600 sort of straddles the previous gen, but it'll be interesting to see where it ultimately lands. Plans. Intel needs mention with their ARC A750 aligning perfectly with the 6600 XT and the RTX 3050, while the A770 overlays the Nvidia cards with a starting price of just under 300 bucks. And with Black Friday right around the corner, I'm sure a lot of these prices are going to slip even further lower. But you know what's an insane price? This case from Fantex. I like it so much, it's currently my gaming case, for real. The Fantex NV5, the perfect hybrid between a fish tank and your regular mid-tower with visuals of your components prioritized without compromising on component fitment. Put in your favorite AIO at the top or the side, support the GPU, hide the cables and enjoy the built-in lighting, all for an affordable yet elegantly matured experience so you can envy responsibly, my friends. The NV5, check it out below and please don't keep your case on the floor. Gosh. So with that out of the way, let's see what this pile is all about. Let's see what we have on tap here when it comes to the GPUs that we've chosen. There's a pretty broad selection from the insane looking Acer Predator A770 16 gig to reference cards and even a trip down memory lane with a few cards from EVGA. Overall though, this is a pretty good indication of what you can buy right now, mostly in the lower end of the pricing spectrum for each respective design. The RX 6650 XT and RX 6750 XT need a call out too. They're only five to 10% faster than the standard versions, but are on average quite a bit more expensive too. So they can pretty much be used interchangeably here and won't be included in any of the charts. So anyways, let's talk about what would happen when you want to use any of these GPUs as a a simple drop-in upgrade solution for a mid-tier older system. For that, we hauled out the old trusty 9600K along with a GPU that maybe would be a fair representation of what people would be buying in combination back in those days with that CPU. And for that, we basically chose the 
EVGA GTX 1660 Ti. This thing has been rocking actually my girlfriend's system now for a bunch of years. I wanna preface this by saying that the game list here is a little bit more constrained since the intent was to show how well these things perform in newer games. Whereas testing with the 7800X3D will be a lot broader. And yes, resizable bar was enabled in all testing. At 1080p, the first thing that pops out is that some games are incredibly CPU bound on a 9600K, even when using mid to lower end GPUs like these ones. That could lead you to spend hundreds to upgrade something like a GTX 1660 Ti only to get a performance bump that'll be hardly noticeable. That could lead you to spend hundreds on an upgrade with virtually no performance benefit. Of course, there's also slightly better situations, but you'll still need to spend RX 6600 money or more to start seeing any tangible visual benefits. That's mostly due to more affordable cards like this 6500 XT, RTX 3050, and sometimes the A750 doing so bloody poorly. Moving on to 1440p, this is where cards with less than eight gigs start choking in some newer games like Baldur's Gate. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same story as with 1080p. If you have a decent card from a few years ago, like the 1660 Ti, forget about buying an RTX 3050 or A750 and definitely avoid the RX 6500 XT. It's a dog. And I'm sure a lot of you are also wondering how much performance is actually being lost, if any, to that five-year-old CPU. If you have this type of system, is it time to maybe look at a complete system overhaul instead of pouring money into a GPU upgrade? Well, overall performance over all of the games looks like this. And the almost flat line here points directly towards there being a system bottleneck, at least at 1080p in high settings. So let's overlay performance with a 7800X3D and there's obviously a pretty clear story here. If you're thinking about buying anything from a 6600XT upwards, a lot of your money is being flushed down the toilet. Unfortunately, cards under that don't provide a meaningful performance increase over a GTX 1660Ti. So if you intend to game at 1080p and have a mid-range CPU from a few generations ago, I'd recommend you upgrade that before grabbing a new GPU. Now, all of this does come with that one major caveat that all of these numbers are actually based on a decent for the time GTX 1660 Ti. So if you're rocking like one of those older 1060s, RX 460s, RX 560s, the performance benefits will be a lot more and you're going to run into those CPU bottlenecks a lot later. The other thing that you might be thinking is like, look, I've got an old system and I completely Shit out of luck, do I need to upgrade the whole thing? And the answer to that is actually no, because there's a sweet spot where you won't leave much performance on the table and that's at 1440p. Here we see a lot more breathing room between the GTX 1660 Ti and the other cards. So obviously some of the 9600K's limitation has been set aside, but it's a lot less than you might think because with the X3D, there's still some titanic frame rate jumps for the fastest GPUs here. And most cards still benefit in some way or another, though to varying degrees. The good news is they all get noticeably better frame rates than the 1660 Ti, except one, the RX 6500 XT. It's absolutely pathetic, especially on older platforms, since it's constrained to a four lane PCIe Gen 4 interface. So the move to a motherboard that supports Gen 4 and 5 is why you're seeing the X3D give such a large FPS boost. And if you're actually thinking about buying one of these to play games at 1440p, which is actually the best bang for your buck? From a raw dollar per frame perspective, the RX 6600 series is just unbeatable. Meanwhile, if you want to stick with an NVIDIA card with a lower budget, I'd recommend you skip the RTX 3050 entirely and grab an RTX 3060. It's still bottlenecked somewhat by the 9600K, but much less so than higher end cards. The ARC A750 is another interesting option here, but its performance tends to be pretty inconsistent. Of course, we also need to address how these cards perform in an absolutely best case scenario. So without any processor bottleneck on any of the cards whatsoever. And I also have to mention that the RX 6500 XT and RTX 3050 are not going to be seen in these charts. I don't recommend you buy them for a 9600K. Therefore, there is absolutely positively no way you should be buying either of those with a higher end system either. Kicking things off with 1080p, and as we go through these charts, there's a few trends that jump out. First of all, 
the top spots typically trade places between the RTX 3060 Ti and RX 6700 XT, while sometimes in NVIDIA-friendly games, the RTX 4060 jumps into the action too. The same thing can be said about the RX 7600, which gets a boost in AMD-sponsored titles, which is pretty impressive considering it's between $30 and $60 less expensive than the higher-end cards here. The middle of the pack switches hands a lot, but generally you'll see the 6600 XT 3060 and A770 battling it out, which is still a disappointing result for Intel's ARC, since the A770 is the third most expensive card here. And speaking of Intel disappointments, their two cards are all over the place. I hinted at the inconsistency in the 9600K benchmarks, but it becomes super evident here. Sometimes they're battling way above their expected performance, while at other times their frame rates just tank relative to the competition. And that means the much less expensive RX 6600 typically beats the A750 and can even match the A770 in a lot of games. That's great news for people who want to spend under $200 for a GPU, but really bad news for Intel's current pricing structure. Now I understand you might be rolling your eyes at some of the performance numbers we're seeing on these lower end cards, especially in Starfield, but technologies like DLSS and FSR do help especially when ray tracing is turned on. So while the visual benefits of RT are debatable, at least upscaling gives you a fighting chance of experimenting without absolutely tanking performance on more budget-focused GPUs. In 1440p, things become a lot tougher for the less expensive cards, with the RTX 3060 Ti 4060 and RX 6700 XT stretching their leads. You'll also see some situations where the XT's 12 gigs of memory is clearly allowing it to power ahead where other 8 gigabyte AMD cards just don't. The A770 is an interesting story by showing some flashes of brilliance, but it was also dragged towards the bottom in many games. The A750 does the exact same thing. Anyways, the middle ground is dominated by the usual suspects, but this time the RX 7600 typically stays closer to the bottom rather than climbing into the top cards every now and then. Actually, the raw performance delta between the 3060, 6600 XT and 7600 is virtually non-existent, with all three cards delivering almost identical performance. The RX 6600, well, it might be at the bottom of most charts, but it actually delivers super competitive performance here, battling it out with the much more expensive A750 and typically coming within just 15% of the 6600 XT. And once again, at 1440p, upscaling can bring some tangible benefits to the table. I'd actually argue FSR, DLSS, and to a lesser extent, XESS are more important for these GPUs than they are on flagship models. Of course, the 4060 has the advantage of supporting frame generation, and that can push it to a pretty big lead over everything else here on games that actually support it, though some situations they do benefit more than others. And with all of that, do we have a clear-cut winner here? Unfortunately, no. I wish I could point to any one of these GPUs here and say, yo, this is exactly the card that every single one of you guys should be buying. There's a lot more that has to happen in the conversation. And the first thing I wanna talk about for that is power consumption. Because let's be honest here, a lot of these cards are going to be used as drop-in upgrades for older system where their power budgets might be a lot more constrained. And with power averaged across all the games we tested, the RTX 4060 is the real champion. It's almost unbelievably efficient and delivers insane performance per watt. On the other end of the spectrum, there's the Intel Arc cards. They are so terribly inefficient. The A750 barely beats the RX 6600, but it can chug back about 50% more power. And the A770, it gives you mid-tier performance while needing almost as much juice as an RTX 4080. If we move on and look at raw overall performance at 1080p, it's pretty clear the 4060, 6700 XT, and 3060 Ti are on a whole other level when compared to everything else. The RX 6600 and Intel Arc cards, well, they bring up the rear. That only tells half the story though, because let's overlay each card's average low price and it's obvious paying a ton more money doesn't necessarily get you higher frame rates. And people who are shopping for a GPU in this price range, they care above all else about performance per dollar. So if I focus only on that, the metrics suddenly look a hell of a lot different. 
all of the 6000 series have a massive lead since they can deliver amazing performance relative to their cost. And the Nvidia cards become a little bit less tempting since they've held their prices so well over time. And Intel's ARC series, well, they're a phenomenally bad value. They need a price cut and fast. The alignment at 1440p switches things up a bit since the A770's memory size allows it to get better performance in a few games, but it's still not worth $290 and more. As usual, the 6700 XT and RTX 3060 Ti are in a battle for the top position, though they're also two of the highest priced cards here. But regardless of the price point you're looking at, any of the RX 6600 or 6700 series cards give you the best bang for your buck. AMD has an undeniable advantage over Nvidia here. The 6750 XT and 6650 XT are good alternatives too, just be aware they're typically priced higher than the standard cards, so it becomes a zero-sum game. Plus, they aren't widely available in many regions. Alternately, until they get a major price cut, I'd avoid the ARC cards altogether. And while the NVIDIA cards might not offer the best price to performance ratio, we have to remember reflex, broadcast, video super resolution, and a bunch of other features do add a huge amount of value for some buyers. Now, for folks who are in the market for an NVIDIA card, I would actually recommend the RTX 4060 for three main reasons. First of all, it is so power efficient that dropping it into an older system shouldn't pose any problems whatsoever. In addition to that, electricity is getting so freaking expensive. I know all of these are relatively low wattage cards, but this one is even more so. The other thing is DLSS3 and frame generation. Two things that the RTX 4000 series has that the RTX 3000 series doesn't get access to. And hopefully that will allow this card to stay relevant for a little bit longer. If you want a serious jump in frame rates while staying with Nvidia, the RTX 3060 Ti is pretty tempting, though it loses in value since it's so expensive right now. And from a pure raster performance standpoint, I'd actually choose the 6700 XT anyways if you're shopping for something in the $300 range. And while there's plenty of reasons to buy an RTX 4060 over the RTX 3000 series, even with its eight gigs of memory, I really don't see why anyone would want an RX 7600 over a 6600 XT. The XT gets you comparable performance, has access to the same features, and it costs a whole lot less. And if you want to spend 7600 money, then grab a 6700 XT, which is a superior card in every conceivable way. And I'll admit, the only thing that throws a wrench into every single number and every single recommendation that you're seeing here is of course the used card market. It is so broad and it is so variable, it's almost impossible to get into it in a video like this. But my best advice for anybody shopping in that market is simply to buy the best you can afford, cross your fingers that you don't get a next mining GPU and go from there, enjoy your new purchase. So I guess that's pretty much it for me. For this video, I hope that this video allows you to make a more informed purchasing decision as the holiday season comes up. I'm Mike with Harbor Canucks, and I will definitely see you in the next one. And spend responsibly. Have a great day, guys.